Hey, the big guns, when it comes to seasonal hurricane forecasting, issued their mid-season hurricane forecast, and the folks at NOAA are now expecting more storms in the 2023 hurricane season. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis. In this video, I'm, of course, going to show you the forecast and break it down, talk about why, but then also show you something interesting that could happen over the next couple of weeks when it comes to the Atlantic Basin. Here are the new numbers, but before we get into that, if you do want to stay updated on all things weather, especially hurricane season as we venture through the peak, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that if you find this content helpful, informative, please do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button. It really does help us out a lot. All right, so hot off the press, August 10th, the annual mid-season update from the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, the forecasting division here. 14 to 21 named storms. Now, this does include the five named storms that we've already had this season, but look at the change. That was up from 12 to 17 from their preseason forecast issued at the end of May. Now expecting 6 to 11 hurricanes. Remember, we've only had one hurricane. That was Don. So expecting five more at least. Major hurricanes now expecting two to five. So again, this is a pretty significant jump here when it comes to the midseason forecast. Again, on average, we typically see 14 named storms. So they are starting their lowest part at average and then increasing it up to potentially 21. Now the reason for this is because of the extremely warm waters of the Atlantic Ocean. We've documented this a lot. But what is interesting about this is the folks at NOAA anyway believe that the extremely warm water temperatures are going to counteract this. And what you see on your screen here are the temperature anomalies that signal El Nino. We've talked about it being here. It's been here since June. It continues to strengthen. But all this purple here represents the sea surface temperature anomaly that is El Nino. Now, typically, El Nino means a way more active Pacific. And I'm going to show you that in just one second. It's going nuts right now. And a less active Atlantic because of increased wind shear. But again... They're believing that the warm waters of the Atlantic are going to kind of counteract some of the limiting factors that El Nino brings on. Now, look at this. This is how warm. We're talking sea surface temperature anomalies greater than 5 or 6 degrees Celsius, where you're talking about this darker purple and almost black color into the North Atlantic. So maybe they're thinking we can get some of that late season activity, October, November, maybe even extending beyond the season because the water is so warm. Now, one thing I will say here, it's kind of weird and it's still going to be very, very interesting to see what happens, is that typically as we get deeper into hurricane season, the impacts of that wind shear from El Nino get stronger. So now we're going to be dealing with that. We're going to talk much more about that through the course of this video, and then I'll show you what's interesting in some of the modeling over the next two weeks. But one of the calling cards of El Nino is a very active Pacific Ocean in terms of the tropical activity. And that's exactly what we have. You can't have storms going nuts in both basins. That's other. That's also important. More often than not, anyway, you get rising motion in either the Pacific or the Atlantic, then it's the opposite. Right now, we clearly have rising motion. Look at this. Here is Hurricane Dora. That continues to move away from Hawaii, again, passing south of Hawaii. This was partially responsible, unfortunately, for the devastating fires on some of the islands, especially on Maui over the past couple of days, really helped to crank up the winds as part of it with the uh, increased pressure gradient with that big high pressure to the north. Anyway, look at all of these clusters of thunderstorms that are kind of spread out throughout the eastern Pacific right now. Look at this. The Hurricane Center has three areas in the Pacific highlighted for tropical development. That leading tropical wave has a low shot, but then we go to high, and then we go to moderate. So we could have three more storms quickly here develop on the Pacific side over the next seven days. So what about the Atlantic? Cue the crickets. There's nothing going on. Again, this is great news for land right now. And again, we're knocking on wood through everything here. But there's nothing going on. We do have a few thunderstorms rolling off of Africa. The last kind of loop here, I'm going to take a closer look at that little blob trying to emerge off of Africa. There are some indications that that one is going to try to develop. So here's a closer look at this tropical wave here that's still over land. And this is what we start to see as we get deeper into August. And then the first couple of weeks of September, these waves starting to become a little more prolific, a little more numerous that roll off of the African mainland, these thunderstorm complexes. That's what we've had happening for the last couple of weeks but the Atlantic Basin has just not been able to support them. They've 
been spit out by Africa, and then the Atlantic has gobbled them up. It's been dry air dominating the basin. It's been sinking air dominating the basin. Both things go against tropical development. Now, what I'm about to show you, what I'm about to show you is just a model forecast. This is one representation here of the next 10-ish days. I will say here that the European model has kind of been asleep this season. There hasn't, it has not shown a lot of activity at all until this run. So this is where we're going to have to watch closely. But then I'm going to show you the American GFS again. Be careful what you see out there. We're going to watch this closely to see if the environment can sustain this. But notice that what happens as we get into the last few days here of 17th, 18th, 19th. That's going to be, at least the European anyway, wants three storms. There's one there. There's one there. And then there's another one there. So the European wants a very active next seven to 10 days in the Atlantic basin. Can it happen with all the activity in the Pacific? It's possible, but the basin is still a little hostile out there. I'm going to show you the GFS same time period, next 10 days, little spin out there. There's the 13th, but now you don't see those big consolidated balls. If you will, that big, beaming red to indicate a lot of low level spin and a lot of strong low level spin okay there's a little bit out there now it's going to be interesting to see how the monsoon trough or the intertropical convergence zone kind of interacts with some of these waves here some modeling handling different of course the euro is way aggressive on there we'll see if it comes into fruition but one thing i will say is there's still a lot of dry dusty air so even if we can get some waves to consolidate to detach themselves from that monsoon trough that's out there and to be by themselves and to start thriving they still have to fight that the saharan desert is just one of the components here there's still just a lot of dry air in the mid levels of the atmosphere and there's a lot of sinking air remember i showed you the crazy active thunderstorms out there the named storms that are out there in the pacific that's where all of the widespread rising air is right now when it comes to the tropics. It's in the Pacific. We'll see if we can flip that switch. We'll see if we can do that again. The European wants to, but the Atlantic is still a little hostile out there. All right, it is important to note that once we get to this point, there's still 80% of the hurricane season left to go. So the meat of the hurricane season is yet to come so when you look at those numbers and be like wow that's crazy that is a lot more storms forecast that is typically what we see we're actually still ahead of schedule even though it's been a very quiet stretch i'll show you that coming up in just one second but there you go again the peak climatologically is september 10th but really the peak of hurricane season is about where we are right now the middle of august all the way through september and then you see that little nub again at the middle of october Right here, we typically get a secondary peak here as we start to get more cold fronts coming to the south and they meet up with the warmer water and we stall things out and we generate those tropical systems, those more homegrown systems, if you will. So there's still a long way to go, albeit that very aggressive forecast from the Hurricane Center, given the limiting factors. Now, if the European comes into fruition, that's going to be right on the money. We're going to keep on watching that. So you have to hit subscribe and we're going to keep on breaking down the atmosphere with science and meteorology and not with all that other junk that's out there. So we're going to, we're going to watch that closely. So keep it here. Hit that subscribe button. Give this a thumbs up if you're finding this helpful. All right, Ace, if you follow this channel, if you hang out with us on a daily basis, you know I like to show you the Ace every now and then. This is the real measure of the hurricane season to date. Anytime the storm gets named, becomes a tropical storm or greater, we start to generate ace and basically it's a metric here that uh takes into account the longevity and the strength of the system you add it all you add all of the ace up per storm and then this is what you get so 2023 to date right now 16.2 is that number the average to date is 12.5 so again we're above where we should be for this time of the year even though really since dawn it's been dead quiet in the atlantic there are the storms that have been out there. Arlene, Brett, Cindy, and of course, Dawn was our lone hur hurricane to date of the 2023 hurricane season. You may be wondering, you said there were five named storms. 
there have been, even though one of them is technically unnamed. There was that one in January. I'll keep on making sure we all remembered that one. Uh, there was that one unnamed in January that the Hurricane Center found on, on routine reanalysis. They always go back and kind of look and look at things, see if anything was missed. And they determined that in January that there was an actual storm out there that should have been classified as a subtropical storm. So that's why we have five. So again, those numbers that I showed you at the beginning, and if you happen to be tuning in uh, at the latter stage of this video, I will show that to you again. Again, that increase from 12 on the low side, now up to 14, to 21 storms, which would be a very active season. Again, a question to see if we can get to that point, just because of how things have played out to, to where we are and with the strengthening El Nino to eventually really increase the wind shear. We'll see what happens, again, if the aggressive European model does come into fruition over the next week, and we're going to keep on breaking that down together. So make sure you subscribe to this channel. We're going to keep on watching that in these tropical updates. They're going to be right on the money, and we are going to see a very active end to the 2023 hurricane season again if the Euro comes into play. I'm a little skeptical at this point. All righty, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll say it again. If you want to stay updated on all things weather, especially as we are in the peak of hurricane season, hit subscribe, please. And again, if you found this content helpful, if you like hanging out with us, like talking weather, post your questions in the comments, where you're tuning in from, hit that thumbs up button. It does help us out a lot. Hit that alert bell. You'll be alerted to any time we post new content. And we will catch you next time.